We are learning new information about the extensive security effort taking place in Washington in order to provide a peaceful transition of power on January 20th. Roughly 21,000 National Guard's troops are deployed to the Capitol ahead of Inauguration Day. Police officers from across the country will also be heading to Washington. They have been called in to provide backup to the troops stationed on the ground. On Thursday, FBI Director Christopher Wray held an inauguration security briefing with Vice President Pence in the wake of last week's attack. He says the threat is ongoing and more armed protests could occur between now and Inauguration Day. We are seeing an extensive amount uh, of concerning online chatter, I guess the best way I would describe it, about a number of events surrounding the inauguration. We're concerned about the potential for violence at multiple protests and rallies planned here in D.C. and at state capitol buildings around the country in the days to come that could bring armed individuals within close proximity to government buildings and officials. The FBI has arrested more than 100 rioters in connection to the deadly attacks on the Capitol last week. The agency has also confirmed the identity of more than 200 suspects they believe were involved in the breach. CBS News has also learned the Department of Justice's Inspector General is opening an investigation into law enforcement's preparations and response to the assault on Capitol Hill. The defense Homeland Security and Interior Departments will also conduct their own reviews. CBS News' Natalie Brand joins me now from Capitol Hill with the latest. Hi, Natalie. So FBI Director Ray says the agency is tracking a significant number of online threats of violence in Washington between now and Inauguration Day. How is that impacting the security on the ground in and around the Capitol? Well, Tanya, it seems like security continues to grow here with each passing day. As you know, normally you can just walk on to the Capitol complex behind me, but now uh, it has this fence around the perimeter. This went up just a couple of days ago. We see military vehicles here. Of course, we have uh, the thousands of National Guard troops. And then if you take a look down the street, you can see the security checkpoint that's set up. That has not only National Guard, but additional law enforcement, uh, secret service officers. So this is an, an incredibly secure capital complex. And then once you walk on, there's additional fencing, additional barricades, additional security checkpoints, even for the reporters and staffers and, and members who officers inside recognize. Uh, so we are dealing with what seems to be a really unprecedented security level uh, in modern times. Uh, this, on top of all of the road closures, dozens of road closures across the region. Uh, and we also know that this heightened security and the safety precautions extend well beyond uh, the Capitol Hill complex and White House area, but really across the region. And what we heard from FBI Director Ray yesterday, uh, they're worried about the threats beyond D.C. And so there's also a warning out to individual states to really take precaution and secure state capitals and government buildings uh, outside of, of the district, Tanya. So an extensive effort, Natalie. Um, Inspector General has launched a full review of law enforcement's response leading up to and following the storming of the Capitol. What more do we know about this newest, newest investigation? From what we understand, this will be an intense deep dive into whether there were failures with uh, information sharing ahead of uh, last week's breach. And also, uh, a lot of questions have been raised about response time and, and lack of preparation uh, among law enforcement here uh, at the Capitol last Wednesday. Uh, and then the time, we know that it took hours uh, for additional uh, reinforcement and, and National Guard troops to arrive on scene that we saw with our own eyes. So uh, since a lot of questions have been raised around that, they will also look into uh, the response 
preparation ahead of the breach? And of course, uh, was there some sort of huge information uh, intelligence sharing failure uh, that prevented law enforcement from acting sooner uh, to be in place and ready for the, the type of attack that we saw last week? And uh, Natalie, our own Catherine Herridge has reported the use of military hand signals by some of the rioters participating in last week's insurrection. What does this tell us about the potential planning and preparation that was involved in these attacks by some, of course, not all of the rioters? Well, we know that angle is a top priority uh, that's being investigated by the Sedition Task Force uh, within the U.S. Attorney here in D.C., their office. And, and as Catherine reported, a video and information, uh, a Washington, D.C. police officer uh, says that he witnessed some members of that group using military-style uh, hand signals as they were navigating their way uh, in and around... Uh, the Capitol complex. So uh, that raises question about potential. Uh, was this a group that uh, was premeditating or, you know, planning, uh, knew what they were doing, the amount of training that they may have had? We know that uh, there were current and former uh, military and law enforcement officers being investigated as suspects, all of this being looked at. And as Catherine has reported, Thousands of hours of video footage and digital tips are being reviewed as part of this extensive investigation, Tanya. All right, Natalie, thank you so much. Great job holding your composure with uh, the heckler there. All right, thank you so much, Natalie.